Hello there guys, welcome to Life in the Pride Hands, a podcast where we discuss all things the Lion God. <laughs> I'm here with... The Bogey Dimmer Baby. I'm here, Mac Guy's here, Lion King V's here, oh, yeah. uh, fucking Possibly's here, Ultimate's <laughs> here. Let us do, pro- let us do no. proper introductions. Okay, okay. fine. <laughs> Guy <laughs> then. Don't introduce us for them. Sorry, okay, but nobody know. else was saying know. a word, so I was like, okay, I'll introduce you, idiot. <laughs> I don't think that was supposed to be a cue for me to introduce myself, but no. I hesitated. Uh, so, the, na- the name is Wilson, or Connor Emery, and I am this uh, fandom of King's resident, Brownie. Okay. I just restart the whole thing again. No. No, 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 First, I think it would be good to take a look through all of the episodes of season two. Since the last time we did the podcast, it was kind of well at the end of season one. Season two didn't exist before time. season two. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll start with the the first episode of season two. Babysitter Bunga. Babysitter Bunga. What a I liked Babysitter Bunga. I, it was a like, good episode. I, I, I this is an incredibly unpopular opinion, but I didn't really like Babysitter Bunga. Okay. <laughs> All right. Give reasons, oh. Mr. Ultimate. I thought it was a very fun episode. It was. I I mean I am like. I like the episodes where they balance like hardness with darkness. I feel like those are probably the best episodes. I mean, I do like the dark episodes, but then again, like it was, I don't know, I kind of just liked the happy, I don't know, episode. It was a nice episode. I'm sorry, I'm more of a dark person, but the most lighthearted, one of the two most lighthearted shows I watch on my little pony. Well, as a lot of people say, to each their own. I thought like <coughs> the episode was kind of hit or miss. Some things worked about it, but most importantly, it was like one heck of a letdown for a season start. Like oh, you would expect yeah. something more bombastic to happen. I, I, I have a question. Well, I mean, return why, would, why would you place all of your kids in the hands of Bunga? Uh, that's because it's literally big, everyone in the Pride Lands is an idiot. There's a wide bit of potential with using Bunga as like the like, babysitter, but you have you have to think of who would be like the best option for that. I mean, like, what would best you do? Uh, I, like, would, I mean, you know, compared to every, I mean, there's, I mean, there's Bashti. Bashti is a good option for option for a babysitter. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just one big question before you before you keep on talking. Just one thing: uh, how whether or not it is allowed to curse while we're doing this uh, podcast? Uh, because then the, the best, so I'm just gonna use my I curse it's way too much, and I can't help it, so I'm just gonna curse anyway. So I'll keep myself like, PG, PG, probably PG thirteen for me. I can't <laughs> help myself. Says no. Uh, no, that's okay. I, I, I okay. Babysitter Bunga was good. It was a good episode. I it was, liked that. Yes, it was a joke episode, mate. I liked the song. It was yeah, just, it was I don't know good. why they didn't put Rise of Scar as the first episode. That was I just didn't really they, like, dumb. Didn't they, like, put the song? The song was, wasn't the song like, released, like, a few Yeah, yeah it's the pilot to the episode, so why don't we just put it yeah. as the first like the pilot of the episode was aired as the third episode in the season. Like, okay then. The Rise of Scar should have been the first episode <laughs> yeah. because that's when it transitioned from lightness to darkness. So they should have put sort that of dark, as... sort of dark, not really dark. I don't anyway. think this show is very good at doing the uh, dark stuff, though. I agree. Maybe they still need to get used to it. Like, uh, but uh, wasn't like the darkest episode that they had in season one ever war again. Uh, never again. I I liked it. TPA. I liked it too. I thought I thought it was pretty. Cool. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I mean, my favorite episode of season one, probably too many termites. I, I watched like that once and I don't remember a single detail about that except I had termites and Bunga eating them like half the episode. Half the episode was literally a Bunga eating montage. Honestly. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. My favorite season one episode was definitely 
Don't judge the hyena by its spots. The first one. The I song is very good. Way to kick off the show, if you ask me. Don't judge the hyena by its spots. What you call it? I mean, a big. And it was the best episode of the yeah. season. Probably one of the best of the series so far. And especially because it's uh, one of the best songs in the episode so far. I mean, the season so far because. Uh, mm -hmm. And this show has uh, a very, very great soundtrack. I agree. It makes you wonder why they make it. And then there's like, and then there's songs like Tick Birds and Rhino. Oh no! Let's not talk about those. I mean, there's good songs. Okay, stop. Then there's songs that's like they didn't even try. It's pretty bad. The next episode was. Yeah, that is really right. This I'm one, looking at the list. What even was I that episode? Alright, no, I don't first really remember that episode. Why bother with Demi Maku? I don't remember I that episode at all. What was it? Yeah. Was? It was the worst Savannah Summer. What do you have to say about Savannah Summer? Savannah Summer was in. Why would you redeem any of your villains? I thought Savannah Summit was kind of boring. Ah, what was that one? It was, one, it was yeah. interesting on a morality level. Like, you definitely had a villain from the first season, and you basically introduced the concept of somebody having able to change their personality to, to you know, become something different and not to stay a villain. Yeah. As that. Can they look at other shows for that? Didn't yeah, that much, but they made me get like, angry at Kion in that episode, so I disliked the episode as a whole. Uh, I, mean, summit, like, I, I did like that. research this on this, this episode and noticed that. Uh, <laughs> and like, it was also was even funny about uh, Savannah Summit was basically the fact that you kind of got a lot of these animals who were previously just being normal, you know, bystanders, and now they could actually be assholes at times. That is brilliant. Just the fact that you got some side characters who are not necessarily just because they're part of the Pride Lens doesn't mean that they're good. They can also yeah. be completely not twats. That is something also, really completely, completely not give anyone a chance and then just completely turn themselves on them. Look, hmm. For me and Savannah Summit, I feel like there's like some real world alignments in that episode because I looked into it and the day that um, the Savannah Summit aired was the same day that um, the G20 Summit aired and I realized that this is like a leader, it's like a meeting of all the <clears throat> like the 20 main world leaders and that kind of aligned itself with Savannah Summit since all the animal leaders are converging for this summit. And of course you have like <clears throat> with Maku, he's the one that's a controversial animal leader for Maybe like he like represents Russia. Yeah, he's a Russia. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like it's either Russia or America. And that represents America. And Germany. And another, yeah, another thing was the fact that there's like several of these leaders that were plotting something against Maku. That could that could align to some real world consequences because, with given how some countries within G20 are more controversial than others, it wouldn't surprise me that like you could have a collegian of several different world leaders like plotting against another one that they don't like at all. So yeah, that's a good story. I agree. Exactly. I, mean, the episode, yeah, I like how they that faked episode. a character's death in a preschooler show. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> because it's a preschooler show. Exactly. Imagine they actually killed they someone. Had, like, Imagine that they had like, live birth on the show. That was also they had a live birth. Like, like, why? I mean, they didn't show it literally, but it definitely was like happening during an episode. And like, they had a zebra going into labor, and that is more than you can say about other... Mm. Kind of shows that are made like Paw Patrol. <laughs> yeah. And actually, and I know I hate using like compare using um what is it IMDb, but as of oh, no. today, IMDb states Savannah Summit and Let Sleeping Crocs Lie is the top rated season two episodes. Really? Huh. Uh, both both, lie? both with nine point one ratings. Nine point one. Good grief! That's a high rating. Babysitter Bunga follows with an eight point five. And then I guess it's the big good episode. Last because I was a... Now don't get me wrong, I like Let Sleeping Crocs Live, but I absolutely hate what they did to Scar. They killed yeah. Scar off. Anyway, that's, oh, that's, that's later. Yeah, no, that's... that's I, I, I honestly feel like the Lion Guard presents Scar as like this grizzled, battered, and bitter, this more dark interpretation of the character. Like earlier, they 
Earlier, like in the Lion King, they presented Scar as this manipulative person who uses others to get what he wants, and they still have that kind of personality. But in the Lion Guard, he's more dark. He's more vengeful. He's he's in in my I have a plan. You see the lion burning, and as that see, happens, Scar will say, and it will be yeah, glorious. See, with that kind of imagery, I feel like with that kind of imagery, um, the line this kind of like ties into the fact that um, in regards to like season two in comparison, like um, the viewership for season one, like so far as of right now, Rise of Scar is the highest viewed episode of the season so far. With I believe last time it was one point three eight million. The others have barely been able to crack one million. Now yeah, one of them. Is. Was and like season just one episodes where you've got one point seven. Yeah, the most one. viewed season one episode was Call of the Drongo. I'm pretty sure. Almost seven million. Yeah, almost yeah, two million. Yeah. Ridiculous. Anyway, next episode is the Baboon Show. I oh, believe. fuck! Yeah. Sake. Yeah. Yeah. This was where I believe the season started to go down. That song was so catchy. This is where the line dot starts but, to go down. I, okay, but and honestly, I feel like for some part of that episode, like. There was part of it where it's pretty much some of it was like, I don't know if this is like the right term to use, but I feel like some of it was like an Ono oh torture porn because they literally <laughs> abused the crap out of them. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Okay. Reminds me of the Squidward <laughs> torture oh, porn. Oh, God. <laughs> that, episode, that episode can be summed up in one line from Ono. Oh it's, it's just another baboon show. Exactly. It's just uh, it reminds me of those uh, Squidward torture pawns on like, you remember those? Yeah, like where Squidward just got tortured like the whole episode? Yeah, it reminds me of those. Yeah, that's where I got the, that's where I got the phrase from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Just kept just like, we need to put something here, let's just make a, an episode where we torture Ono the whole way through. So mm -hmm. Ono's been tortured, and now he's actually got an episode of his own coming up after. Oh, no, the way he does. That was yeah. the best episode. Oh, oh no, on the yeah. egg, yeah. That was I decent. I forgotten what that episode That was, was. cute. Just got to ask a question. <laughs> just got to ask a question. Would you trust Uno looking after small children? No. Mm. I mean, after watching the episode, not really. Uno uh, can barely look after himself, much less children. But let's be honest, like, at least Ono would have, like, an idea of knowing what he's doing in regards to, like, Bunga, who's just completely unorthodox and could probably get you killed. Oh, yeah, he's got <laughs> Wikipedia in his we'll get you <laughs> What about a baby baboon, though? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Throws him into a river. I would have thrown the baby baboon in a river. <laughs> so I just make a million joke. Yeah, Would you trust Ono looking after a small child? No! Oh, oh, no. oh no, for I fuck's can't. sake. <laughs> Die. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That's true, but other than like the main plot of Ono and the Egg, there's like some other parts of Ono and the Egg that people would have a problem with. Like, I know this is like the first time the season where... But with... <laughs> I, I pretty much have like a just keep track of like how many times like you have like Bunga using his quote unquote as Kahuna would put it defense mechanism, which they are being anatomically correct, but that's the first time we've seen that in the season and in the whole of season two is the first time he uses defense mechanism. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Actually going back I mean... to um is it? Babysitter Bunga, literally his first line of the whole second season w was a joke about that. I'm which says a die. lot. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that, because like, oh, yeah. I, I used it in the YouTube. Don't work with me it, and here. <laughs> I added some, I added some, some laughter from like a, uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, where they always add laugh tracks to, the kind of show. Like, I added the oh. laugh tracks to that because of how stupid it was. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Is that it about oh, owning the egg? Because I feel like we've glanced over that. But then again, is it no, there's, there's a few. Oh no, in the egg, yeah, alright. So it was cute, but I don't really like like the episode. It's just it was cute. That's it. It's really it's a good guy for it. Like the first season episode with Beshte and the little bastard elephant. Um, that was followed by Hippo, I believe. 
I disliked the mother bird. Yeah. Like, what kind of bird just drops their egg into some re into some bird's nest without asking them? Like, what the hell? And then, like, goes away somewhere. Like, just mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, because she's a bomber. What? Okay. She probably has like 1,000 pictures of Ono. Just for the sake of having Qtu, it's most of the time not going to be qualitatively speaking good. It's mostly just going to be focused on acute stuff and not really achieve anything. Yeah, it was just a key episode. Like, there was no character development or development on the plot or development of the show. It was just like a cute episode. What? It was like, it's sort of like this this anime shit where they. It like, was one of the movies. episodes where the yeah, four year olds would really the like it, episode. but then we would all <laughs> hate it. Yeah, yeah. I suppose you. Actually, speaking of like making the episode that the four year olds would like, it's kind of funny how they would like. They would take like 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 one of the more cute episodes of the season and then literally follow it with one of the more dark ones, like the, yeah. literally the episode. But but in short, I feel like Rise of Scar. Oh, I did enjoy it. Like it does have a good soundtrack, but I feel like it was just more of a ratings trap. Yeah. Rise, of, Rise of Scar was like a bit of a letdown because like Scar rose right at the fucking end of the episode. That's exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's, Ra it's Rise of Scar. Totally literally, Rise. the Let's Scar says three episodes. He says yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Rise of Makini. I would be like calling Vertigo the accidental suicide of the blonde chick. But yeah. But see, but this is, but here's, my, here's my clear problem with Rise of Scar. Yes, it was longer than like Return of the Roar. It was maybe it was seven minutes, six minutes yeah. longer, but I Turn feel like forty four, and then yeah, Scar was Price 51. Scar. But yeah, fifty one. See, but with that, it's just you feel like I yes, I know they're trying to um, condense it into like a one hour time slot, but I feel like Disney should have given the creators more power, given them an hour and a half time slot, so they could work off of it more. Because I feel like trying to tell a story like that within fifty one minutes is just so you're, you're going to half ass it. You, you know you're going to. Have to. Unless you yeah, like, you know, just do the main stuff. I have an idea on how I would have the Rise of Scar. I mean, I'm not going to lie, David Oyelowo is a great uh, voice actor. Why I love his performance. And why don't we start talking about the songs well of the episodes? Because, like, well, okay. yeah, like, what honestly, about the songs? I would have, the first thing I would think is Scar's screen time. Have him have more screen time. And instead of having him appear at the end of the, end of the movie, have him appear midway in order to actually build him up more. Exactly. I mean, like, since we, yeah, since we're now, talking about Rise of Scar, we definitely have to talk about, like, the new introduced as toy slash, uh, slash, slash new character, uh, Makini. Makini. Yeah. I like, we just, I she's like, annoying. Oh my god, she's probably going to be really annoying. Bunga. And she was. Kind of really annoying. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, as much as, I, as much as I like Makini, Makini is essentially a monkey bunker. I mean... Makini <laughs> yeah, is a fucking Ezio of... of we, we already have one bunker, we don't need another. Yeah, yeah, I don't the Ezio of Flying God, I stand by that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Makini so is a good one, though. Everyone wanted to be a ex bunger. No one wanted to so die. Just the only one who. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, McKinney reminds me of one of those OCs from fan fictions who are playing our team down the beach as a princess. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's like a fursona. It was some. It was just a way of getting the plot sorted, like a way of doing the plot. Yeah. There was no, like, character in it apart from just out there and brash, but it was just a way of getting the stick to the snake guy to throw into a volcano. Which is really like a weird thing, considering that it shouldn't be that big a problem to, story-wise, move a stick from point A to point B. It's a stick. Somebody can... Higher character. Oh no, it's not just a stick. According to what the movie implied, it's a holy stick. Yeah, um, holy stick, whatever. That holy stick and I sell it. I could sell it for like five hundred bucks. But here's the thing with that: it's just like I feel in this episode, I know that Oshari goes from neutral to evil, and yeah. he asked me that like, we like, don't need we don't need two characters <coughs> like changing allegiances within the same season. Like we're from the to good. Oh, and to, be, to be honest, he returns. <laughs> what a dog. Okay. 
and I deal the same thing. So. Like at the end of the day, end of the season, it's gonna turn into the kids' version of, or maybe like Mad Men, and then everybody's just changing. Or it's uh, just changing something. So yeah, that's why. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, more complicated and like interesting. I'll be honest like, with you. Many changing the charm was always pushing more towards evil than good. So it, it would theoretically make sense for him to go full on evil rather than stay neutral forever. I mean, do kids so understand the the or, or? But, with, but with the um the darkness of like the whole I, I still think why isn't it on why isn't it on Disney XD instead of Disney Junior because so many times it's suggested. Yeah, I I brought that point up. It is what it is. It's happened. It's happened. Pretty you much. can't change that. I mean, like, <laughs> why, why, why can't you have like the normal episodes air on Disney Junior and while the movies air on Disney XD? Because <sighs> they'd rather get that. that means you have to split the viewer base between XD. the two channels. Mm-hmm. And that's not good. Alright, uh, let sleeping oh, cocks bry. The oh, fuck, that, I can't speak that's here. That, that, one. that one. That was like the guys of skill, really, wasn't it? They kind of ruined the skill, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think they ruined Scar, but they just made them darker. Mm hmm. It's just. It's just. Why? It just Why? made him into like the head from the Power Rangers, who just Why? gives them like the basic roundup of what they have, what they have to do, like just the evil version of it. Mm -hmm. That's actually kind of lame. <laughs> I am it's Scar, the untouchable. I'm Scar, the floating face, who's just gonna give you generic orders and plans <laughs> that definitely not going to come to fruition. Yeah, since he can't do anything. Yeah, he's exactly. just a, he's he's just a blob in head. a volcano, so he can only like. Oh my god! In the end, it turns out he's like the uh, the floating head from Wizard of Oz, and in reality, he star Scar survived, and he's hiding behind a curtain, holding the <laughs> strings from there. And he's got wasn't yeah, Scar didn't really die. He's just hiding somewhere. He's just <laughs> he's, he's just, just like, projecting like, himself on fire. Yeah, the and like conspiracy and theories in the Bidens, like that with Hitler in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> you think of it, it's gonna happen. I mean, that would be really stupid, but at the same time, really funny. Scar <laughs> bursts in randomly. Yeah. All right, well. But no, it actually turns out Bunga is Scar. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. That would be a right, one, one fear I have about season two is that they'll miss you, Scar and Mufasa. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, god. <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a massive battle. Mufasa's wall. No, no, it's oh, not gonna be a massive battle. They're just gonna yell at each other. Like, Scar and his volcano and Mufasa in the clouds and just gonna <laughs> yell back and forth. You, you no. stuck. No, 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 you stuck. <laughs> He's basically Yoda. When will all the characters find out about Scar? It doesn't really matter if they fight. Soon, probably, because the Hainers are so bad at keeping secrets. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it reminds me of something. Like, when if they fight Scar, they can't necessarily defeat him again. Exactly, unless... Unless he's all over the volcano. The exact opposite of what they were doing with Scar, and just do it with. Maybe they Mufasa. have to do it in like certain horror movies where they just have to find his bones and give him a proper burial, and then his ghost will find rest or some shit like that. Yeah, that's pro I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's a bit. I mean, I mean, they, I mean, they'd probably be under the pit. They'd probably be under the edge of Pride Rock. And knowing Disney, they're pretty much gonna force the creators to pull something out of their ass in order to explain it. What do you think? Of the plot against Simba in a preschool mission. Yeah, yeah assassinate him. Yeah, uh, nice. that's what my main concern. Like, let's try kill them. No, I feel like character in a preschool. Simba is, ba Simba is basically the walking definition of plot armor. Oh yeah, they're <laughs> like, we got to see Exile in the show. That's like the first time, I think. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. The imagery of Swift Pride Rock on fire is just you're basically giving preschoolers nightmares. Yeah, why not? Dope. Just put just go all the way. Just I mean as dark as we want. I mean it's not yeah. as scary as say like the real life butterfly from SpongeBob, but this is 
along yeah. that same level. Hey, oh, wait, wait. made for One a dope screenshot, though, to be honest. Why? This is nothing more than kids right. entertainment and they're putting well, dope stuff in. Well, I can't himself, as his face, has always been catered to everyone. Why would you make the Lion Guard cater to children rather than all the audiences? Hardcore, hardcore and new fans can enjoy it, while old and, while old and young can also enjoy it. But this isn't the first time this has been done. Before. He just left, by the way. Possibly died. Oh, it was Chase. Oh, whatever, this fuck, the possibly. This has been done to an animation property. property yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Like, some kids' shows are, like, so harmless, and then there's just the Lion Guard when they're trying to put in these dance themes, and they can't go all the way because it's Disney Junior, and it's so frustrating. It and how like, would you actually yeah. sell stuff to, to teenagers if you made the Lion Guard uh, into a show that it was handmade for Disney XD instead of uh, Disney Junior? Because, like, on Disney Junior, you can sell stupid playsets that would be bought en masse by mm -hmm. uh, parents. By parents who don't know anything better. Yeah. I mean, I mean, hell, they did it for cars. No, fine, been. Like, cars got a television show? Why? No, no, like, no, like, with merchandising. Yeah, I mean, that's like the best. I mean, it's they, they, they still try to get in good messages and stuff. Okay, yeah, the whole car is just a massive advertise stuff. Merchandise. I think I can find our okay. mm -hmm. I, I, I think I found the car show you guys might be talking about. Yeah, I think possibly just gave up and went to play Osu. You're a fool, I'm gonna tag him and say, you fool. And then... um, here, I'll do it. Uh, let's, it was just... let's just all do it. <laughs> well, there, we both did the same thing, only mine's, only mine's my talent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh, well done, Good job. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> it was just right into chase. You're yeah, cool, he, cool. he got off her <laughs> <laughs> so oh. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> gotta say, brilliant podcast, brilliant. Yeah. Gotta, give you, gotta, give you, gotta give you a little bit of a clap. twist, he's not really playing Osa, he's watching Paw Patrol. <laughs> no, please don't talk about Paw Patrol. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, isn't a Paw Patrol podcast. I would rather watch, uh, what was it called? Uh, Squirrel and Hedgehog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <No, laughs> really? Yeah. Um, that that is what the Lion God needs to be. The Lion God needs to turn into Squirrel and Hedgehog. We need to add more guns, that was more references to real life, and yeah. animals re representing... Kion finds a gun. <laughs> 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 Season 3. Yeah, Kion riding in the tank. <laughs> I mean, there was that episode, that episode of the Moon Good where uh, Beshti has to fight off a bunch of Funk Street Giraffes. Uh, oh my god. When are you going to make that, Sarge? Have you been like, <laughs> <"Well, laughs> really late? I have no idea. Sarge is too busy playing Palatins to make good videos. Okay, so, Big I have a question off. regarding one of the future episodes. What do you think rescuing the Outlands will be about? Um, someone gets taken to the Outlands, or... And then they've got to rescue him, or there's like a good animal in the Mike? outland. No, it's to, it's uh, basically just going to be what happened in Rise of Scar to Ki Kiara. It's just like someone's going to get kidnapped, yeah, they save him. I have an done. idea. You know Zara, Zara gets kidnapped by crocodiles, sent to the outland for Johnson. Scar and Kaya has to go and be her, sh her knight in shining armor. Okay, so. You know what would be brilliant, but what won't probably happen? Iron injures himself, gets dragged into the Outlands, and to keep him from using the roll, they hold like a knife up to his throat so that he can't okay. use it, and he's trying to say <laughs> oh, it without the help. See, it was like, sort of sounding she cool, but then you like, brought a knife, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not happened. <laughs> I mean, I've wanted to see like a dark fan fiction like that where one of the characters literally get like held, like kidnapped, no, just literally possibly. like hold trapped in a cage, literally can't do shit. That I literally make some fun guys like, go into chaos. Regarding like, like, like Zazu has just trapped in a cage. Oh yeah, I like Zazu like... in the first movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With Rescue in the Outlands, I would probably be surprised if they... This is probably going to seem extremely unlikely, but I would love to see it. I would love to see another cameo by one of the Outsiders. Oh yeah, it would be brilliant. 
Like yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe something yeah. stupid like Kovu hurts himself, and then they have to rescue him from. Kovu needs to be rescued. Or maybe, or maybe, or maybe, or or maybe or or problem, I would have. I would be. I would be for. Um, I would be for like a Kovu um, cameo in that episode where they had to rescue him. But I feel like if they did something like that, people are gonna scream like, "Oh, that fucks up the canon." No, it doesn't. Yeah. Cannon's already know. fucked, I don't care anymore. The cannon is dead, the cannon is completely dead. They keep people. ruining it more and more. The cannon's yeah, probably nothing, they might as well just like add a new character. excuses for that being cannon. That is not that yeah, hard, you just I need to say, oh, that and that character won there in the second movie and stuff like that, because... I mean, I mean, there, were, there, could, there, there, could, I mean there could always be theories, like my theory, that they use their territory around to series as a sort of military base area before they... <laughs> military base. Speaking of just Siri, like they did confirm she was going to be returning in season two, so that leads yeah. me to believe that, was that what if she's the subject of this what rescue. She's the one who needs to be rescued. Oh, exactly. That makes sense. That's that's pretty much the most likely option. Just Siri but gets called for ransom. I don't know her Kiara, but honestly, I don't want to see another Kiara kidnapping episode within the same season. If Kiara gets kidnapped again, it makes Kiara look more pathetic than she already is. Literally, the whole royal family gets kidnapped. And this is coming from somebody who loves Kiara. Simba, Simba, Nala, and Kiara get kidnapped by three hyenas. That's the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Kiara Kiara get kidnapped by three hyenas. Literally the entire Pride Lands get kidnapped. And it's up to only the Lion Guard and Rafiki to go save them. Yeah, exactly, but if the whole Pride Lands got kidnapped, surrender the Pride Lands to us, we commit a mass genocide. <laughs> Fuck's sake. No, no, not just the whole Pride Lens. <laughs> like, even the people who kidnap them get kidnapped. There's nothing going on the whole episode. It's just a plain Pride Lens with nothing happening. It's, it's going to be a yeah. permanent episode. I know you get kidnapped in 10 out of 10. <laughs> it would be a mass kidnapping. Exactly. And then if they don't, like. Yeah. It'll probably be darker if. Like, like I said earlier, if they don't comply with their demands, they'll kill them off one by one, and... <laughs> and then no oh, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, they have, like, a shotgun or something, just, like, we will end What's the you. best episode going to be? The best episode is obviously going to be Rafiki's new neighbor. I'm going to be the one where John just finds a shotgun. I, I love how I love how the the character appearances when they have the garden that we're thinking right now. He's basically confirmed that you signed in the episode title. Bother. No, it's maybe this will be another appearance from McKinney. Maybe. Oh, bother. That She's a bother, so... I mean, if it's an Rafiki's episode about new. Rafiki, then most likely she's going to get shown again. <laughs> Rafiki's new neighbors is just gonna be an episode where he definitely like he literally gets new neighbors, then he welcomes them, goes to their uh, new house party, and yeah, but then drunk. it's gonna be like baboons yeah. where everyone thinks they're like good characters, but then they're like robbers or something. It's a hangover for <laughs> I won't be surprised if his new neighbors are related to the king. I won't be surprised. Yeah, because the kings are full and the neighbors are probably also full. Actually, it's gonna be a, a new neighbors are literally just Jar Jar in disguise. What if our Fiji's new neighbors are McKinney's parents? I can see that happening to me. I'm doing it with you today. in the bin. But the thing is, how do you, how do you have. How does Rafiki's tree have neighbors? It's an next tree over. That's not the big problem. I mean, the baboons are the neighbors. Um, unless they somehow populated the trees of a um, tree of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also live in the tree with Rafiki. <laughs> there are, like, small trees and bushes around there, so... Why do they inhabit that? Um, maybe they live underground or some nonsense like that. It's not that big a problem really to, to just be like neighbors. It, neighbors doesn't mean that someone has to live right next to you. 
means that somebody has to live next to you, not right next to you. So that is really not that big a question. I would say. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe by neighbors, they mean they literally live in the same tree, just like a room apart. <laughs> you really need help building those underground uh, homes. Just ask him, though. He's the best digger. Yes. You <laughs> dig, dig a tunnel around for you to get neighbors to live. Well, news from the underground. He's the best digger in the I feel like your cats are the only ones in the Pride Lands who can actually dig. Speaking of that, I I would love to see an episode that's completely focuses on Timon and Pumbaa. Like, but then again, the people just say it's a rip off of One and a Half. Yeah. Or on the actual television show that was about uh, Timon and Pumbaa the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they already they have like a TV and, show. and and yet and yet the the description of the show prior to its release was that it was basically the. The Avengers meets the Lion King, and yet they're not calling it a ripoff of the Avengers. Yeah. yeah because, well, the Avengers? If animals just have no if anything, I consider it a ripoff of Marvel McConaughey. Okay, <laughs> oh. well, here we go. Yeah. Let's <laughs> talk about this. I'm actually open to discussion, but I'm gonna call bullshit on that. Yeah. Where did we see Uncle Max and Mark? Again. They need to come back just to confirm the back. I mean, I haven't watched My Favorites. Little Pony like at all, but like, is it that oh, similar? Uh, it doesn't have that much sim them that many similarities. It really doesn't. No. So so the only thing that ticked most people off was like Kion's little little marking on his shoulder, Everyone which had nothing so to do with anything. It was basically, just like a tribal tattoo to say he belongs to the fucking god, and that was it. It was a tribal tattoo if you wanted like that. Yeah, it's not like he roared and discovered this special talent with roaring or something like that. That would be stupid in description. Why, Why do people think that they're similar than not? They're more annoying when they. Power Most problems are being solved by pure physical interaction and not by thinking about stuff on an emotional level, as it is I, like. No, I feel like they were completely relocated with Fiki Street. Yes, it was further away in the Lion King. Well, then again, so was Timon and Pumbaa's still place. They sort of bring that place as big as they can. Oh wait, I just, yeah, I just looked up the description for Fiki's new neighbors. Yep, yeah, they're related to Makini. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, oh, awesome. This is gonna be really annoying. No, yeah, I just... I can, I'm excited. Did we really I need, like, more bungers? bungers? Like, no, we had one bunger, then we had two bunger, now we have, yeah, like, here's, three here's, or plus here's the bungers. Here's the difference. Bunger is an idiot, right? Yeah. And that's what makes him great. <laughs> now what makes him a good character. Makini just... Doesn't listen. Mickey is an airhead. Straight and low. She's just playing She got ADHD. No bother. Something link cooldown. Completely ADHD again. But if I had to pick, like. Pick look, Bevis. I think I'd pick someone who, like, dramatically, like, declines, like, gets annoying to me, but. God, if I had to pick. If, if you ask me, I don't feel like. Um, crap, I'm drawing a blank here. I've lost a trans line. What were we talking about again? Oh, that awful idea that the neighbors were bikini. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I feel like. I know she kept getting, like, cut off in Rise of Scar, but I feel like with one of these future episodes, we're probably gonna get a full. Enough. Today is my day, or something like that. Okay, that's I made like a little video where I just summoned up the Rise of Sky in like a few seconds, because like that was part of it where I just ed edited the uh, Monty Python joke from uh, 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 from right. uh, Rise, Monty of, Python Rise of Sky in one sentence. It's not really Rise of Sky. No. If you're gonna name if you're gonna name a movie The Rise of Scar, but have Scar barely be in it, what's the point of calling it The Rise of Scar? That's why I say it's a ratings trap. It's click. You basically, <laughs> yeah, it's a ratings trap because you're promising viewers one thing, but then you turn it around and give them something else, and then the stuff yeah, that I mean, came. Like, 
Disney clickbait. Of my kingdom is not gonna do the trick. Like yes, I get the whole episode was them like going through the whole um giving the trouble of like summoning Scar, but I feel like they should have done more with him in that episode instead of just pushing him until the very end or something. Like the more more accurate the title would still be the uh, more or less important appearance of Makini. But yeah. But what angered me the most was them delaying the, his song until yeah. Let's Sleep Live. So excited for Scar. Oh, the song's not there. Oh, well, speaking of song, like two episodes and have the second half be called The Rise of Scar. They should have split yeah, it up. Makes sense. Yeah. That would make sense. So much better. Although they should have just put the whole thing together, like the Crocodile episode and yeah, and The Rise of Scar together. I would have rather taken elements from. Rise, not Rise of Scar, um, Sleeping Crocs lie and just add that on a Rise of Scar and it's passable. No, 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 no. Let Sleeping Crocs lie and let it, let it be its own thing. Oh, no, the, it's so good. Yeah, well, the, why people said it was the Rise of Scar part too. I don't want it. Otherwise, you're just forcing them to fit like two times the amount of content into one episode and it's going to feel even more rushed. No, no. Alright. So what? Has everyone here seen that new trailer for the new three episodes yeah. that are coming out? Yeah, that like 30 That's seconds. Let's talk about shippings! Oh, oh no. Yeah. No, 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 that's gonna oh, turn cringy real fast. Yeah. I mean, you ever watched Doctor Who? Yeah. Yeah. I know Sarja probably hasn't seen the 30 second thing because he thinks a 30 second clip of three episodes is gonna spoil the entire thing, so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to see any of that. Okay. <laughs> well, we can't talk about it then. Don't we, Jeremy? We'll talk about what? Okay, I'm gonna watch it now. Give me the link. It's um, in future episodes. Just like the latest video in the the one. That Swept away future Rafiki's episodes. new neighbors oh, preview. And then we can talk about it. Please. Watched it then. The end of it annoys me. That zebra. Uh, whatever the leader's <laughs> name is, I'm just gonna kill myself. I'm not even gonna try. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. I'm not gonna try to pronounce the zebra's name. Fuck that. The zebra? The, the leader I mean, of the, the zebras, thing. whatever. The idiot. The really <laughs> stupid the one. I hate first. Everyone hates Thurston. Alright, Thurston reminds me of what I'm talking Thurston is pretty much the idiot of the whole series, even though he's a supporting character. Who? Alright, Thurston reminds me of one of those rich people uh, we have seen who, that. who have the personality of a rich person who acts like they're rich, but aren't really smart while being rich. Yeah. They're a stereotypical dumbass hang. I wouldn't be surprised if people label them as dumber. Yeah. Then again, people already label because the, the new generation's scrappy do. <laughs> it's dumb bunga. <laughs> it's even dumb. You're better than Down syndrome bunga. Oh. Bunga being dumb again. Bunga gets Down syndrome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Send this to the heck no. Finds finds well. Like all the Lion God members get some sort of real weird mental disease. Oh my god. <laughs> and they're just, oh, they're just oh, sitting there drooling and they're dying in off field. What if they just all switched personalities, like Bunker and Kion switch personalities? Oh god. Like then Kion, is... Kion's just Bunga not would've so used the raw like yeah. big time. Bumping into the wrong everyone and everyone. Dumb. Like this bug. Did you just jump oh, through the door and just pull what's in it because he's not fast enough? Bother. Yeah, see, like, if you ask me, I feel like if Bunga and Ryan were to switch personalities, I can only imagine how many, like, like a complete switch, like everything Bunga's personality, traits, things about themselves switch over or something. Like, yeah, Bunga would just, like, roar at a bug or something. 
That'd be a cool episode, but I don't know how they'd set it up, so... I that mean, like, would like, what also would be kind of interesting, or let's just say at least entertaining, given that Path to uh, Udugu was a pretty good episode, would be a little bit more of a uh, sibling interaction between Kiara and Kion, obviously, if they if it's done good. Like, they could actually, like, develop a better understanding of each other, because, like, uh, sibling interaction is always interesting, especially when they're growing up. They need to be more interactive. You're never gonna, they're never gonna like, like each other. That's just like, a hard... That's not the point, you don't need to like they're each trying other, like, to... from the face, but just an episode where they have to, like, where, where, where at the end of the episode it's basically like, oh, well, I was totally underestimating the shit that you were doing, and the other person is like, oh, I was totally underestimating the shit you were doing. And really, we should respect each other and stuff like that. I mean, it's cliche, but it is. It, is, it always makes for a sweet episode. Yeah, and they did it. And can't wait to be really? clean, but that episode was just bad. Bah. So. Yeah, that's what I said. We need to make it good. We need to make the leg good. The ending was decent, I guess, but the whole episode was just yeah, cringy. Yeah, about an elephant funeral. Which yeah, that's is... pretty dope. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't speak yeah, elephantese. So I just it tell him that crazy. he's got shit on his ass. I mean, on his back. <laughs> <coughs> he had poop on him. Ha ha! Funny joke. Oh, <laughs> foolish joke. Yeah, that's game. people give that. People give that stuff. You know, like people give like lying guard crap for having toilet humor, but I actually do remember. Um, Literally, I was like, I got like someone like watch a clip of the show on Twitch stream. Well, actually, I do this quite often, but I showed them the scene with the um, my, um, Hafifu Majinuti with the pangolins from Lost Gorillas, and if you know what I'm talking about, he like yeah, they just sprang at each other, and he literally and the dude literally asked, "Is this what passes for kids shows nowadays?" And I'm like, "Are you kidding yeah. me? This has been." Part of the series since for the past twenty years, and there's kid shows that have far worse than this. See, also Mega Babies. Right. It's Full not. Time. It's not something that's taboo as it was. Like, it's not taboo now as it was back in '94. But I, I understand why you would say something like that. But it's. Uh, it's not about being taboo. It's just it's, it's not a very funny joke. Out of everything, like. These gorillas, the gorillas was an awful yeah. episode. <laughs> through. Yeah, an awful episode ruined by awful voice. Oh, oh fucking God. YouTuber! Put YouTubers in a line guard episode. What a brilliant idea! Completely no, decided that they need to be sucked. They should have like filthy Frank voice act in there. Okay, that. That would have been a better idea. To that would be brilliant. In before they maybe hire more YouTubers. HVH productions. Look, you just got come, in, come in the show and have me on voice. That would actually be a nice question to throw into the room. What, what kind of, uh, who would you like to see as a guest voice actor in the, uh, in the Lion Guard? Uh, me. Uh, <laughs> God. That's a tough one. Maybe if Jake Paul didn't lose his Disney contract. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that had to be... Legit, I would pick JG huh? Quintel and Bill yeah. Sawyers. Basically, any YouTuber that has a nice I'm voice. Sure. Patrick Stewart or Snoop Dogg? Okay, I would, yeah. Patrick Stewart would actually be pretty cool. Neve yeah. Campbell, the voice of Adult Kiara. If they just have a nice voice, I don't care. Just pick them. I would rather pick JG Quintel and Bill Sawyers. Basically, and Rigby from regular show. Anyway, why did we talk about is the Lion Guard going downhill? Because that's why we decided to do another podcast. <laughs> yeah, about, like, probably. Are you going downhill? Going downhill. Yeah. The Lion Guard is going downhill, but there's still potential. It's, going it's been going downhill since Return of the Raw. Yeah. <coughs> oh, everything went <laughs> up since Return of the Raw. Return of the Raw was Return of the Raw was the lowest point. Mm. That was a disaster. That's Raw. why the show is here, popular. Here I'll put like a list of like. Return of the Raw made some of the worst. This is like this is like the list of episodes from IMDb, but they, these feature like all the ratings 
out of 10 for each episode and how many reviews it has for each. Oh, yeah, so, remember yeah. Racist Symbol? Why don't we talk about that in Return of the Raw? Yeah. Racist Symbol? What the fuck are you talking about? You remember? Uh, <laughs> fuck. When he was telling Kai no, on not... he can't have any other animals but lions in the guard. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that was bad. YouTube yeah, that was kind of a thing. Like with this, sh with Lion Guard, I feel like it does do stuff. Like it is teaching ch like young kids about diversity and acceptance. Like even though it doesn't really, um, like it's it does not preaching like like something like it's not having like LGBTQ themes like Steven Universe, but it's doing something that would be accessible to such a young demographic like that's I mean, why they did have that one song where it was like you gotta stand up stand out stand up stand yep never roar again that was that was sort of like maybe in a little bit more progressive and maybe sort of lgbt-ish so and again and also yeah, do... but i mean like it could be used as a metaphor or something I like that how they did touch on the um like discrimination in that episode with like, oh, just because he's different, it, like, gives him a, a reason to ridicule him. Yeah, precisely. Okay. Yeah. But to be so fair, like, any it. song that is sort of like that can be counted as LGBT. Like, there have been songs that had nothing to do with LGBT. And Maybe. then they were just sort of used as such. Maybe. But yeah, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, but... <sighs> but... Yeah. yeah, but on the on the topic of Heather has got it downhill. I mean, I wouldn't say so. It, it it's, it's improved on many levels. You got certain things like obviously the animation has gone better, has become better, and yes. uh, there's also the effect of adding a bit of continuity to uh, things every now and then. For example, the dry season was mentioned in like an episode. I don't know what episode, but before uh, let sleeping crocs lie and let sleeping crocs lie had like a high focus on the dry season. So, yeah, they, they are starting to establish continuity, although I'm pretty sure, like, if the ratings start, keep on dropping like they do, the whole show is going to be, uh, like, cancelled before season four. I don't want to be. Has the show gone down? Wasn't, wasn't season three no, now? The so Lion Guard is basically an up and down thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, to some extent, I can't see where you're coming from. Because... <clears throat> I mean, they have to say. Goes up, they goes down. Up, they down. Up, 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 like, if, have I gotten tired of the show at all? No. no I haven't. I haven't. But I think they're caring is less than they did before. The start. Like, I have caring less and less about the story. Yeah. And See, this is why I feel like Disney is killing their own shows. Like, season one, like, especially the second half of season one, pissed me off when it came to episode scheduling. Yeah. yeah, that was awful. Oh, episode like, scheduling. Yeah. Want to get on this topic? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Season two. to say it is awful. They didn't manage no. to schedule that. Two episode month hiatus then. after two month hiatus. Beautiful. No, that, like that, even that, as a Sherlock fan, you're better off. But what the hell was that all about? Are you trying to alienate the Huh? Yeah. And also take out the crap. Ripple. Like, you are supposed to, like, air an episode each week instead of, like, stretching it out as much as possible. And people do, like, shows do lose <coughs> interest. Like, they do lose viewership when it comes to... And this doesn't just apply to Disney and The Lion Guard. Like, any show can, like... Um, they'll, they can lose viewership if they just stretch out the episode, like what Disney's doing with Lion Guard. Yeah. I mean, most, yeah. most seasons seem to be able to do it weekly. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, this one can't for some reason. Like, why does it really take that much effort to do a two D show? Like, yeah, a lot more than a three D show. Yeah, I mean, I mean it takes them like a year to make one episode. Though, I mean, they're to be animating it in three D and then converting it to two D for some reason because two D yeah. animation is such an art form. They can't do it. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like yeah. Regards to that, TLG is like I think it's a pretty much a two D and three D show because. Like, some people have pointed out, like, if you pay attention, there are, like, 3D models in the background. Oh, you just hmm. aren't paying, like, in 3D, they just flattened it out. No, like, <laughs> no, actually, a really good example this was, I believe in, um, 
what is it, in Bali Fields migration, like, yeah. with, like, all the, like, all the zebras in the background, if you look closely, they're just, like, 3D models, and they look completely different than the characters in the foreground. So yeah. it's, like, you're not supposed to notice that and how badly they are, and, and someone to actually sent me a picture of one of them without having the eyes. So it's just, you're half-assing it. Mm. Some people think that including Scar is making it go downhill because Scar has no idea for some reason about Zero. Scar mm. is a thing. Like, why is he talking about that? And if he chose Kobe to be his pet, how is he not talking about that? Did Zero make it up? Or what? I don't know that. Hmm. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. That is a good question. Thanks, Kuna Potato. I just stole your question. <laughs> Kuna Potato, she's I mean, dead though. Well, yeah, like, I mean, like, animation-wise... I mean, animation-wise, it's sort of a mixed bag. But, I mean, they, they still had to, got, had to get used to it, and there wasn't a Lion King uh, flash animation thing before that, so... A computer, anima- computer 2D animated thing before that, so they had to get used to trying to apply these models to this animation style and of course mm-hmm. it's going to look like squat at the beginning but it slowly evolved into it's something that can the actually be animation. bad to look at with regards to the art style of line guard it does look beautiful to look at. like like i do love how the whole series looks as a whole like it is pleasant to look at i don't like return of the Lost star but i like it in later episodes like we should have done <laughs> yeah. I like the backgrounds. The backgrounds are really nice. The backgrounds That's are well done. I mean, exactly. Is someone actually painting those? Like, on yeah. like a painting software? Exactly. Like, for example, this is the first scene in Rise of Scar with the elephants. That was probably. That was extremely beautiful to look at. I think it's being done by uh, the like, background artists. So. <laughs> So they got back the old background artists. That's I good. I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or they just tried to like copy it as close as possible. Yeah. Well, they did a very good job of it. It's like the best in my mind. Mm-hmm. One thing that I kind of want to notice, like this, kind of get a bit of a change its topic, but one thing I kind of noticed that where I kind of that Disney did start to like slowly not really care about the show anymore is the fact that we've only gotten like one soundtrack and there's like so much other music in the show that's so many more songs than there are I've actually to record it off exactly like on, on YouTube at this point because they've just stopped releasing them yeah like my personal favorite is Path of Water I just, just made a playlist on my YouTube and I just listen to that if I actually want to listen to the soundtrack so mm-hmm. I, don't really care. I think I have to steal that song because for some reason they're not no, no. They just give it. But like, it was like it has, that begs the question: like, what, like, should should they release another soundtrack? Should they do more? It's unbelievable shorts. Or is like they should at least like release the songs on Spotify. They don't necessarily need to mm-hmm. release another physical soundtrack. Less, nice, less, less. less coming well, I'm not a little scared of all the Lingard. I mean, getting yourself. Actually, let me let me do like a quick search on YouTube. Show. I mean, what I think is interesting is that they released a uh, piano vocal guitar book, like for Lion God, which is like this is a show for preschoolers, and you already expect them to know how to read, um, like music sheets and play guitar. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Especially yeah. since, like, most of the songs aren't actually that easy to play on guitar since they have, like, some chord progressions which are a bit annoying. Not impossible, but annoying. I mean, it's just interesting because, like, that is something that I did not expect. Yeah. How foolish. There's a lot of. I yeah, still bought it, obviously, because I wanted to play the stuff on guitar, but I once again, hard, pro- hard, co- blah, 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 hard chord progressions, at least complicated ones. And not complicated, just, just annoying ones. It's the sort of kind of stuff where you got to break your own fingers in order to play that stuff fluently. Uh, right. 
Oh yeah, we didn't talk about uh, what was it, the Path of Honor from the from from Rise yeah. of Star that song. What do you guys think about that? I, I, uh, I heard my favorite song from the Rise of Star be mentioned. Off of Let's oh. bring back a legend, like the start of that song was really good, then it just went downhill and when they just started just, saying, just like, the yeah. Bring yeah, back a legend, legend of, wasn't the I mean, the chorus of that was bad, but I mean, it was good. And then there's Scar song as well, was that the best? Wait, wait, wait. I feel like with bring back a legend, like... They gave like, up halfway like, through. Yeah, but they didn't really, like, introduce Scar, like... If memory recalls, I don't think they introduced Scar at the end of Bring Back a Legend, but I might be wrong. Oh, Path of Honor was that one with Kion and Simba. Yeah, that was good. Yes. You should yeah, that because yeah, probably why that's my favorite is because it's pleasant to listen to. It's something I would listen to like on its own. Interesting enough, even Rob Lowe did a good vocal performance. Like the visuals were really good. Path of Honor is we are one in disguise. Yeah. <laughs> Rob yeah. Low. I mean, oh, yeah. No, that is Rob, Rob is Path of Honor has over a million views on YouTube, so. Yeah, yeah that's good. Mm. But I mean, like, no, seriously, let, let's, just, let's just talk for, a few, for just a sec. That motherfucker was once, uh, like, in suspicion of having had. Uh, sexual interaction with a minor did a lot of drugs didn't really lead that guy much of a, of a of a morally okay life but still he got asked by disney to voice one of the most beloved characters for a kids show <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird it's like taking charlie Sheen and using him for some kids show what, 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 loving what, the maybe it's loving but from what from what i've seen like he he's an asshole <laughs> so he could be great. Great. and he does nothing as well yeah, they should have more episodes focusing on Nala, or have Nala play more. That would be interesting. Nala, like, Nala, is criminally Nala criminally hasn't even gotten her own song yet. <laughs> like, Nala, Nala, like, Nala, 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 Nala. Yeah, for some Nala, help. The, the Kiara already have had her. Hmm. Had her. Hmm. I'm about to pick. I'm about to pick like one character that brings like the. Like he just raises the annoying factor. Definitely Zuri. I agree. I think she needs to be on the volcano. And Why, like, Zuri he was, is the he's the one who needs rescuing in the next episode, so we're all screwed. Yeah, I mean like that would also be another good thing to do to actually do something with Zuri and uh to make I don't think she character. actually is getting saved next episode because we saw in the trailer yeah. it was actually Bestie getting swept away, so... Yeah, but uh, you ask me, Fifu and Zuri are just... They feel like they're just shoehorned in, just... Bestie to make it swept away. Like, oh, yeah, Kiara best. needs friends, let's give her these two that basically have the same personality. Maybe they were, the they were like, supposed to be, like, for, Never. like, identification points for little girls who watched this. Because, like, I yeah. mean, that would be, best these would be awful, uh, awful characters to uh, identify yourself with for so many reasons. <laughs> But yeah, I mean that would be the most likely explanation. I don't see it. why Kiara keeps them around. I mean, they're just there to sell films. <laughs> There's going to be another episode. Kiara leaves uh, Tifu and Zuri. It's pretty much just the episode. I think title. it. I no think it reason. might just be because no. like Tifu and Zuri literally do anything she asks them to do. Dude, but here's the thing with that. Like, yeah, they are home right and left you bring, arms. Or you bring up even. Like you brought up an idea of like of Kiara like leaving Tifu and Zuri. You pretty much do that. You're pretty much ripping off Jonda's new career. Let's be honest. You know what, yeah. what would be interesting would be if these two were actually like, oh my god, we are so useless. How on earth is it possible that Kiara is still hanging out with us? And maybe she's planning on, uh, planning on, you know, leaving us be, and and she won't be friends with us anymore. And then they try to impress her with all kinds of stupid shit. At the end of the episode, she's like, actually, guys, I like you because of the way you are. Once again, I like stupid and cliched, uh, cliched concept, but it could work, and it could give them a little bit more, a little bit more dimension. Yeah, yeah exactly. Not That's nice speaking of what you think, so. I just thought of something. Like, I just, I, I don't know if anyone else is paying attention to this, but you, 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 anyone notice, like, there's similarities between, like, Kiara's Tifu and Zuri with Janja, Chungu, and Cheesy. 
Like, there's... Oh, yeah, they could have an episode together. That would be interesting. Yeah, because I realize they they have quite some similarities with us. But I feel like... But as regards to um, intelligence-wise, I feel like actually Cheezy and Chungu are more intelligent because they do have some self-awareness and they actually seem to know what they're doing. But to be fair, Tifu and Zuri are both younger. True. Oh, but I feel like but with Cheezy and Chungu, they're very interesting characters because, and well, what was the name of it? Um, yeah, John's new crew pretty much solidifies that position for me because once they re were rescued, they didn't really send them back to the Allens and you would think that they would be causing all hell to break loose, but no, they didn't. Which makes the question: Are they really, like, truly evil, or are they just kind of like straddling the line between truly evil and leading towards neutral or good? Are they just being brainwashed by Jinja because they don't know better? North I mean, Korea. Cheesy and Chungwa are basically just to free Stooges at this point. <laughs> it, okay, pretty much. Okay, that's actually very true. That is very true. Mm. Well, at the end of the day, they're just burgers to go. Would they be good? Just eat everything. Yeah, like with Nene and Tano. Yeah, they're more... evil. Oh, speaking of that, like, who came up with the name Nene? Like, like I, like I get that's like the spelling of it, but it's just every time I hear his name, it's just I'm surprised they didn't name Tano Whip. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Right, yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> that would have been so cringy. What are we talking about? That would have made me stop watching it all together, but... Hey, yeah. Riff, nay, nay, come over here. We got important I'm... things to talk about. Exactly. Like, oh, how to fight Bunga and his dabs. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> dabbing his hate. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe they should. Oh yeah, that that would actually be a great, great idea. Uh, Nicholas Cage should voice Bunga. Oh no, actually, across that out, Christopher Walken should voice Bunga in their all future episodes. I just realized that it's it's <laughs> the best idea ever. Yeah, I also kind of realized there was a coincidence that like something I figured it out between um, both with Bunga the Wise, which was which is who I'm to be is like the worst episode of the series. Mm. I disagree. That was about right. Yeah, it's really like, close. It's, it's like, rated higher than like Return of the Roar, which is actually quite funny. But I realized there was something about there's something about Bunga the Wise that kind of like connects it with real world events, more specifically Hurricane Harvey. I I, I kind oh, of a Hurricane Harvey existed when Bunga... no, like no, like Hurricane Harvey was like I think it was like a week or week or two ago, but. I realized something about, um, like, with Bunga the Y is, like, part of it was, like, Bunga, like, stopping, like, a huge flood to the Prylands after a huge rainstorm, and if that causes a lot of destruction, which which did happen in Houston, which, and actually, what, <laughs> what actually made it coincidental to me is because the guy who plays the Joshua Rush, he's actually from Houston. Oh, which, boy. Well, so his house is probably destroyed. So, oh, so Bunga caused Houston the flood. <laughs> That's not funny, but it's still kind of funny. <laughs> exactly. Oh, bother. That's a bit of foolish. It's, it's, yeah, but that's stuff. kind of like like making connections between some Lion God episode and, and Line 11 or something like that. Bunga I mean, causes it's every funny. world of them. <laughs> Bunga causes... Oh my god, I actually put that in one of my YouTube poops where I like, put uh, Bunga over the, one of the airplanes that went into the Twin Towers. Mm, my god. <laughs> I think I saw that. Yeah, and then the episode was like the sinkhole. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was it? Yeah, Bung and the King. Like, literally, not literally a week after that episode aired, there was a sinkhole that appeared actually in my home state. Like, it appeared in New Orleans, like, like a week after that aired. <laughs> yeah. So, so is it the new Simpsons predicting predicting stuff or something? Yeah, that, that, okay. I always hate that bullshit when people go like, "Yeah, well, the Simpsons predicted this and this." They, they didn't predict shit. It was basically just a bit of coincidence and could have meant anything. I mean, if you're going to do Texas shop shooting, have it your way. But mate, that is just like you. You just want you just want it to be true because like there's not that much supernatural shit going on in the world. 
So that would be funny if a television show from the 90s predicted something like that. Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> All right, well. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Yeah. We want to finish up? I think we've talked about everything now. Yeah. yeah. I think we should finish up because it's like 4.30 for me, so I'm going to have to like, get to sleep. <laughs> I mean, One like at the end of the story, at the end bad. of the whole thing, we can just like actually try to uh, unintroduce ourselves and just uh, say goodbye by saying who we are. If we have something to, where mm -hmm. where someone can like watch our stuff, if we have like a YouTube channel or something, well, like that, uh, and then end it. I'll upload say. this to my dad YouTube channel. It won't get any views, but I'll do it anyway. So <laughs> like, uh, well, I'll probably I'll please. make sure. Actually, I'm, I might actually like link it on like i'll probably like link it on my twitter just because i do have quite a number of friends who like would watch something like that like but, like i said who watch the show and they're actually very interested in it yeah so i could do that i have a cool. dead channel so yeah, you can all watch all it. All all yeah. Yeah. Considered it could have gone well <laughs> it went pretty well we actually talked a lot about make sure stuff to put it in your descriptions i will yeah. put it in my description when i get the video from the you can put the Discord well, link in you. Can I go get my Twitter? <laughs> Alright, okay, Sarja's so gonna do the um, outro because he... Sarja outro <laughs> plus. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Bunga Hold on Earth. Oh, yeah, that's. Yeah, I already saw that. Is that. That picture looks disturbing. Uh, it's actually something my friend drew for me. American Gabba Professional Twitch Donator. Believe of Christ. Well, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck no. Switch donator. <laughs> that's how I raise it. That's how I raise awareness. Show was through Twitch. Of course, my guy. He's got 1,092. There's me with 300. He has 10, 10 followers, followers, though, so. <laughs> And then I have 90. I now I have 90. Uh, Sarge is 870. Sarge, are you show off? I have 121. <laughs> well, what, what or who is Xoran? Um, some guy from the Grand Dose server who just popped in. Why has he left that? The <laughs> server's dead. There is a visit online. Yeah. Someone talked about me. Oh. Hello there. I've officially been summoned. Hello, right. I'll be active for uh, what Howdy. that means. Alright, well since this is dead now, I think we're gonna end it off. Okay. So, yeah. do you want to do the outro, Sarja, or what? Yeah, sure. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, I hope we didn't bore you all to death. I hope not. Anyway, so, I am Color Emery. Just check out my channel on YouTube. Um, we're selling out. We're selling out our YouTube channels. We apologize. Yeah. Our highest viewed uh, video is actually a reaction to um, our Return of the War trailer back in 2015. My highest viewed video is 50k. My uh, highest viewed is day. like 2.7k, and it was a live stream. Okay. <laughs> It is it on the channel I'm uploading this to. The channel I'm uploading this to, all I've uploaded is like a baboon's remix. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baboons. Brilliant. Alright, well, I'm gonna stop the recording. Okay, yeah, that's a good time to stop. Alright. See you guys later. Bye.